Good morning, one and all. The ASX 200 is set to rise after Wall Street rallies. S&P 500 jumps 1.2%. Welcome to the ASX Stocks at Breakfast. My name is Sage. The Australian share market is expected to rise on the last week of the trading session, tracking strong cues from Wall Street, which jumped to a seven-week high despite weak gross domestic product or GDP data in the US. The contraction in the US economy has raised hopes among investors about a less hawkish US Federal Reserve. And on the other hand, domestic mining and energy shares are expected to climb on robust commodity prices. The latest ASX futures indicate that the benchmark ASX 200 index could open 45 points or 0.65% higher on Friday this morning. On Thursday, the ASX 200 rose 1% to reach 6,889.7 points. Although inflation has risen to 6.1% in Australia, in the USA recessions have always involved more unemployment. However, the US unemployment rate decreased to 3.6% from January highs of 4%. Some believe the looming recession could very well be a white-collar one, being termed a milder growth recession. The downturns seem more structural, being impacted by the Ukraine-Russia conflict and energy crisis, rather than cyclical. Tech stocks have been reporting this week. Apple and Amazon have been topping Q2 estimates, and with strong Q3 estimates in the way. Amazon and Apple both had their investors pleased with sales exceeding expectations. Amazon forecasts higher fees for its streaming service, Prime membership keeping it buoyant, and Apple's iPhone still the little darling of its suite of products, with demand being high. Both companies reported lower profits year over year, however, with Apple's decreasing 11% down to $19.4 billion, mainly due to China's COVID-19 lockdowns. And Amazon seemed to be impacted by the valuation of its electric car maker, Rivian Auto. Alphabet Google is still up today, 1.03%, although quarter two reported earnings came in below expectations. It's up 3.04% over the last five days, and Google's currently priced at about $114.22. It could be that Snap Inc. drastically falling on Friday by close to 30% after the announcement of low quarter two earnings could have bolstered the blow for the disappointing earnings report from its parent company, Google. And Snap Inc. is currently priced at $9.67, being 12.88% down over the last five days. The company reported second quarter revenue of $69.69 billion, being up 13% year over year. And net income was $16 billion, or $1.21 per share. Now, Wall Street analysts focused a uh, forecast earnings per share of $1.27, according to FactSet, with a revenue of $69.87 billion. An operating income of $19.4 billion was below the expectations of $20.14 billion. Now, the U.S. economy contracted from April to June to fall for a second straight quarter. The second quarter GDP of U.S. fell at a 0.9% annualised rate, higher than the expectations of economists and first quarter contraction of 1.6%. In the U.S., the Dow Jones jumped 1%, the S&P 500 surged 1.2%, and the Nasdaq ended 1.1% higher. We'll now cut to a short break, but please stay with us. Tune in to get the latest information. Whether it's about market movements or the currency graph. Sectoral coverage or industry news. We cover it all on our news segments. Be on top of the latest news with Calpine TV. Welcome back. Hope your morning's going well so far as the market markets are set to open here in Australia for the Asian trade on Friday, 29th July. In Europe, the stock's 50, however, rose 1.2%. The FTSE was flat and the DAX surged 0.8% and the CAC ended 1.3% higher. An MSCI's gauge of stocks across the globe gained 1.24%. Over to the bond deals now. On Thursday, bond deals declined following the release of US GDP growth data. The two-year Treasury yields fell further on Thursday after dipping under 3% on Wednesday. And the benchmark 10-year notes yield last fell to 2.6723% from 2.732% late on Wednesday. The yield on the 30-year bonds last dipped to 3.0219% from 3.002%. 
onto the oil prices. They remain mixed. On Thursday, oil prices remained mixed as recession concerns weighed on prices. And traders were also concerned after the International Monetary Fund, or IMF, said that if Russia completely cuts off supplies by year's end, the region could face zero economic growth in 2023. So WTI closed at US $96.42 per barrel, down at 0.86%, and Brent crude settled up 0.49% at US $107.14. On to the gold prices. They inched higher as gold prices rose on concerns over the state of the US economy. 94 spot gold added 1.3% to reach US $1,756.59 an ounce, and Meanwhile, the iron ore futures hit four-week highs on Thursday, extending their rally to a fifth session. The prices were boosted by rebounding steel margins in China in hopes of solid economic recovery for China in the third quarter. As we wrap up, let's look at the crypto sector, which actually rose over the last 24 hours in crypto. Bitcoin and Ethereum are both up. Bitcoin is sitting at close to $23,790, being up about 3.62%. And Ethereum, the second largest crypto by market capitalization, is also up sitting at close to $1,715 or thereabouts, being up by about 4.8%. So thanks very much for watching. And I hope your day in trading goes well. We do appreciate your feedback, so we'd love to know what you think of our new show, ASX Stocks at Breakfast. And we'd love to hear your thoughts out there because you keep this show going by watching us every day. And it looks like it could be a beautiful day to wind down the week with today and fantastic weather due over the weekend. So dare I say the worst of winter could be behind us here in Sydney. Well, look, have a happy Friday anyway. This is Sage signing off for now.